my, uh, my, my dad passed at a young age, but my mom remarried and my mom had a bar. In Union City Plus, we were bookies, whatever, you know what I'm saying? We are just trying to flip a buck, you know? And I, went, I grew up in North Bergen. So I was one of the original Cubans there. It was myself and another kid that were uh, the two accepted Cuban kids. You know? People always say I got something against them by the way I talk and stuff, you know? Like Jewish people. I love Jewish people. My best friends in Cuba were Jewish. They had a raft with an engine. Like I stuck up for a kid one time growing up. My first day in Jersey, I didn't know who he was. I just moved over, you know, and my mom goes, why don't you go play? And I went to play with these kids, you know? And next thing you know, I'm playing wiffle ball, and this kid gets into a fight. So I'm sitting there, but this kid's fighting like he had to fight an Irish family. The kid's name were the Robsons. They had like nine kids. So if you fought one brother, you had to fight all nine of them. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just one fight. You had to fight everybody, you know? And all nine brothers jumped this kid. And, you know, I had just moved from New York. I, you know, I was a wild kid, so I jumped in. Now, we got to be about nine or eight. So I jump in. And we get into this tussle, and also the kid's father comes down and smacks this kid, this little kid I stuck up for. So this kid got up and he goes, you're dead, I'm gonna call my dad. He went and he called his dad, I don't know who his dad was, I, I just moved it. His dad was Carmine the Torch Balzana. Carmine the Torch Balzana was a detective in North Bergen, New Jersey. And he pulled up with a car, I swear to God, he went right up to the guys, knocked on the door, pulled this guy out, handcuffed him and beat the hell out of him right there in broad daylight. And there was cops there giving out tickets. Like, nobody would even look at the guy. Like, it was just happening. It was just happening. Nobody would look at the guy. So the guy comes back down, and he goes, did he hit you, meaning me? And the kid goes, I'll never forget this. He goes, no, this is the new spec that moved down the block. And that was a, the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I like, I like California. And California lets you know, like, where you go eat and stuff, right? You go to a restaurant, they got, like, an A rating. I went to get this burrito the other day. The place had like an R rating. <laughs> and my friends, bro, my friends like, bro, this place is dirty. I'm like, hey, the burrito's good. You know what I'm saying? I'll put up with a rash as long as the food is good. You know what I'm talking about? I could get away with murder. I could do anything when I was a kid. Well, it gets better because me and Anthony looked the same growing up. And we used to do everything together. Me, Anthony, Dominic Special, a bunch of us used to do everything together. And we looked the same. Well, in the eighth grade, Anthony Balzano got killed in a car accident. So his family kind of took to me, but it gets better. My mom passes away when I'm 14. And who adopts me? Carmine the Torch Balzano. So now I'm living like a doctor because no matter what happens, I flip you a card and it says, all courtesies extended, Carmine Balzano. What that means is a cop will let you go, but that gave me valid, you know, I had like validity on the street and I had validity in everything I did because I was Carmine's boy. Uh, my high school experience was great, man. Just having the access to New York, I mean, you had to be 18 to drink. It was a lot different. So we were going to clubs when we were 15, you know? I was going to a studio when I was 17, stuff like that, you know? Because they didn't really check IDs in those days. It was very lax. A lot of corruption, a lot of like the waterfront is very big to us. All those pictures of New York City you see, we run that waterfront there. So when the mob was trying to get in there between the politicians, it was very influenced. It was bad. It was a clash. That's why that, all that's built up today. And Carmine is very responsible because he worked for a guy called the Macos, who own all of Jersey City now. Carmine the Torch Balzano got his name because he used to have a flea market. In the daytime, it was a flea market, and at night, it was a go-go joint. So what they do was, after you get the money's worth out of the bar, you burn them. You torch him. That's how he got his name, The Torch. He got in trouble because while it was burning, some kid seen the smoke come out of the building. And he's like, mister, you want, to call, want me to call the cops? Your building's burning. He's like, no, no, no. Here, I called the cops already. But then when they found out it was arson, he faked a heart attack so he wouldn't have to talk to reporters. And uh, the rest is history. Carmine got thrown out of the North Bergen Police Department because he shot a guy in the back seven times at his house that came over for dinner. Later, it was learned that the guy, he owed the guy six figures. So he, how do you kill somebody the best way? Invite him to your house. Put a gun in his hand and shot him. And the beauty of it is, he just got his job back, so he gets his pension. That's how corrupt my hometown is. Now do you know why I left? When we come back, we're going to... Welcome back. 
Before the break, Joey's life of crime finally caught up with him. Let's see how prison changed his life. Take a look. Life with Carmine was great because Carmine was a good man. I would work part-time after school, and he would make me put away 20 and make me put away 20 towards my personal stuff. I mean, he was very, very good. Uh, as I got older, I got a little bit too wild. And towards my senior year, I moved up. And I got an apartment with this kid, Mike Ronnie, who was a friend of mine. And that's when it was all we were on. I was loading trucks at Masback Century Hardware from 7 to 2 in the morning. And I'd go to school from 6 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. And everything else was criminal activities. Selling drugs, burglaries, selling hot stuff, televisions, helping our friends hijack trucks, whatever. Whatever, you know? I mean, we were just buck wild. We were robbing drug dealers. As we got old, it got worse. You know what I'm saying? You ever get so paranoid you call the cops on yourself? That's a bad night right there. That's why I had to stop getting. I was getting high with the cat, too. You ever get high with the cat and stuff? He's looking out one window, I'm looking out the other. Who's out there? Meow! Hide! I was doing acid. You know, I would go to East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania on Saturdays, and I'd buy a 1,000 ups for $35. I'd sell a hundred of them for thirty-five dollars, and that was my income right there. I could move that shit. That was like candy. Then weed. And then as we got older, we started pushing blow, and that was it. And then the '80s were there. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was slinging dick and giving out bubble gum. But I knew it was time to go because uh, an undercover cop came in, and we knew he was undercover. We kept playing with him. This guy was undercover, but he was rocking. This guy had no boundaries. So I knew eventually, bro, I was gonna get my head handed to me. I just didn't know when. And this opportunity came to go to Colorado. You know, and how I went to Colorado was I financed it with drugs and loan shark money. But I went to Colorado and I, and I, and I tried, you know, I was just there one other one of my, my buddies. So for the most part, I was shoveling snow. I was washing dishes. I mean, I had it going on up there too. You know, I was still smoking pot, doing whatever I was doing, but I wasn't a criminal anymore. It took that whole, lifestyle away from me. I was going to bed at 11, getting up at 7, hitting the bag, going to the gym, you know. I had structure in my life. And I, got, I cleaned up my act for a while, but I was bored. And uh, I got in trouble up in Aspen. They were ready to bust me up there, so I left. I moved to Boulder. And in Boulder was when I really got a plunge. I was selling cars, and a kid said he had some merch. And I went to rob him, and I got nailed. And I got six years in the Department of Corrections. I called my grandma today. I said, Walita, I'm going to be on the show tonight. She's like, wear a suit. Last time I wore a suit, I got four years. You follow me, guys? <laughs> you guys will get that joke next Tuesday or something. That's a good joke. I think that's a good joke. So I crossed over. That's where I realized I was a comedian and I had the tools. Because when you go to, to prison and all that stuff, it's very segregated. The blacks hang out with the blacks, the Mexicans with the Mexicans, the Aryans with the Aryans, whatever. I crossed. I had, I had no beef and no affiliation with anybody. And that's when I realized that I needed something to do. I always knew I didn't want a day job. I don't mind working nights, but I like my days to myself. Why? Because I'm alone. Everybody else is doing their thing. You follow me? I just did not. I knew I didn't want to be at the same place at the same time every day. And then I went to get coffee one day. I was a roofing estimator and I went to get coffee for the crew. And when I walked in, I was looking through the paper and it had something about stand-up comedy. And I read it and I took a class for $37. And the guy liked me and he got me a job as a doorman at a comedy club and I watched. I asked questions for five months and then I got on the Denver Comedy Works. From there, it just snowballed. When I read about it, I said, Adam Sandler and Chris Rock gonna make a prison movie? No, this ain't gonna, and especially The Longest Yard. But it dawned on me that he might be onto something. I went to play it against sports, and I bought a, a football suit that was a little too small for me, and I put an audition on tape. And it got to Adam, and I got a call that they were gonna make an offer that day. And the offer was good money. It was, everything was great, plus the opportunity to work with these guys. And I went in there with four scenes and ended up working the whole movie. I was just very fortunate, you know? 